Metroid Black Spike for the first time today. Invigorating, I must say. Why, were I a 76-year-old man, I'd be able to whip myself like a 20-year-old. I took one of the normal spines and broke it in half. The normal size is near that of a curved sewing needle, or perhaps the rib of a trout. I found that daunting, and yet decided I should still try it. I'm not sure what overcame me, but I'm glad it did. I haven't felt this free in months. The spine is brittle and hard. Breaking it is easy, and then comes injecting it. I pressed it against the palm of my hand with a single finger, and then pushed it inside of me. It broke in half again, the smallest half extending from my fingertip and the other from my palm. From my palm, I could feel the spine dissolve within my blood. The pulse of my heart pulled it into my body like a snake swallowing a smaller snake. The pulse in my fingertip was not strong enough, and I felt compelled to push it in with my other hand. I would feel myself grow less dexterous with every heartbeat, with every tug of the spike. It was melting in my blood like fat in boiling water. As the blood raced around my body, the molten black spike melted in my veins and into every organ. I could feel it in intoxicating and vacuous warmth. To my shock, I could even see it, the darkness spider webbing out from my skin and racing around within my vessels. I know very little of what happened then. After my high, I attempted to dissolve the remainder of the spine in water. It doesn't work. It appears to only dissolve within blood. Perhaps it is the steel within one's blood, or other chemicals that melt the spine. It is this as to why I am unsure whether or not I should trust my eyes. I have sighted something odd today, and more disconcerting, something odd has sighted me. I have become accustomed to the dead seeing me, turning to face me, but unable to catch up. But honestly, they do not see me. Their stomach does, but their mind is long gone. I wish something pervaded my gaze today. As I watched the dead mill about, I saw something stride through them with purpose, as opposed to the shambling of the others. Human-shaped, but it wore a thick cloak. It strode through the streets, ignored by the dead, save for those that were in its way. These bolted out of the way, like the pole from the path of a king. It looked around, sniffing the air. It could tell I was here. I watched it, bemused. Nothing in the dead army could reach me from where I was, atop a roof. The high was still dulling my instincts in regards to fear. I should have run, but didn't. Cloak Thing then dropped all fours and began to run. This sharpened my senses, dropping the high from my blood as it all ran cold. I could see a large metal weapon on its back, like an axe or a machete. But as it ran, I could see that it wouldn't need them, despite the upright stance it had claws and likely teeth. I darted across roofs away from it. I do not know if I have lost it, but if you do not find another note from me, that thing is why. I leave you as Asher, more hunted now than I have ever been before.